While most people's pets are either cats, dogs, birds, or fish, there are some pets that take things to the next level. Be it big cats from the savanna or super rare species from the jungle, there are many interesting creatures that some people have as pets. So join me for today's video. We're going to take a look at 15 of the most exotic pets. Number 15. Lions Lions are some of the most beautiful big cats out there, and it's because of this beauty that they've become popular among private collectors in everywhere from the Middle East to the Southeast United States. It goes without saying that lions are impossible to domesticate, and while they can be tamed and made less dangerous, the reality is that owners of lions run the risk of attack 24-7. If that wasn't bad enough, caring for a lion isn't exactly cheap, as to do it properly requires a lot of space and a lot of meat. However, the sad reality is, is that the tens of thousands of lions in captivity worldwide often live in horrid conditions, and given that practically no one can make a habitat suitable for them, I'd suggest finding a much smaller and safer cat. Number 14. Anteaters Many people know Salvador Dali for his famous surrealist paintings, but it turns out that he was also the proud owner of a pet anteater. Native to several countries in South America, they are relatively popular as pets, as they thrive best in room temperature-like conditions and reportedly behave very similarly to cats. However, the difference between cats and anteaters is that anteaters require a lot of space to climb, and in order to ensure that they're healthy, they need to eat almost 10,000 ants and termites every single day. Unsurprisingly, it's difficult for those without special connections to source out tens of thousands of those tiny insects, and this is in addition to the fact there's very few vets who know how to care properly for anteaters outside of South America. As a result, while anteaters may be cool pets in theory, yeah, I'd suggest sticking to something that's a little bit simpler. Number 13. Kangaroos Kangaroos are undeniably cute, and this has led to many who live in rural areas to keep them as pets. And while they can hypothetically thrive on a large grassy property with lots of space for them to hop around in, I'd suggest avoiding these creatures if possible. First and foremost, the pet trade surrounding them is quite sinister, as many are neglected or left in small yards, causing them to die prematurely. Kangaroos are also social animals, so if you only buy one, they'll often acquire stress-related diseases. If that wasn't bad enough, this stress can also make them aggressive, and since kangaroos have powerful legs and strong teeth and jaws, being attacked by one is often fatal. Therefore, unless you've got a proper setup and the money to buy more than one, I'd suggest finding a pet that's far lower maintenance. Number 12. Lionfish Lionfish are easily some of the most beautiful fish out there. Native to the Indo-Pacific region, they have since spread as an invasive species across the West Atlantic, Caribbean Sea, and the Mediterranean Sea, and stand apart for their flamboyant brown, maroon, and white striped pattern and the dozens of spines and soft rays that stick out of them. While this makes them a beautiful species and a prized exotic addition to many a fish tank, their beautiful spines are exactly what makes them dangerous. That's because of all those on their body, 18 of them are dangerous, and a lionfish will not hesitate to sting you if it feels threatened. By many accounts, these fish are some of the most venomous in the ocean, and while a lionfish sting likely won't kill you, it's incredibly painful and usually results in headaches, vomiting, and difficulty breathing. Therefore, unless you're an experienced aquarium expert, I'd suggest staying away from those fantastic fish. Number 11. Scarlet Macaws of all the birds in the animal kingdom, few are quite as flashy as the scarlet macaw. Found throughout Central and South America, they usually stay high up in the canopies of tropical rainforests, where they grow to a nearly one meter long wingspan and often have very bright, vibrant feathers. This appearance has caught the eye of many pet enthusiasts, and when you further consider that they're quite intelligent, after all, they're eager to learn new tricks and can easily develop a vocabulary of 20 to 30 words, it's not hard to see why they've become popular pets. However, while scarlet macaws may be cool in theory, they can also be pretty problematic. This is because they can often fixate on one person in a household, and if not properly cared for, they may engage in self-mutilation and feather plucking. They're also extremely social, and while this makes them great at parties, it can become annoying when they constantly talk or loudly bug neighbors. As a result, it goes without saying that macaws aren't well suited to many household situations. Number 10. Axolotl While axolotls are a little bit strange, they are undeniably quite cute. 
Native to Lake Chalco and Xochimilco near Mexico City, these 25-centimeter-long creatures are a type of salamander, known for their ability to completely regrow lost limbs, organs, eyes, and even parts of their brain and central nervous systems in a matter of months. Beyond their superpowers, they're also known for being very rare in the wild. However, it appears that the pet trade has more or less kept their species up and running. Lasting for as long as 10 to 15 years in captivity, they stand apart for being very hardy animals, meaning they can be incorporated into many different tank environments without issues. Unlike many other species, they're not social animals and should generally be raised alone, and with the right care, they can be a pretty rewarding pet. However, due to their critically endangered status in Mexico, it's important to ensure that your axolotls are not sourced from the wild, and it should also be noted that they're illegal to own in many areas. Therefore, while axolotls may make reasonably good pets, I'd suggest doing your homework before buying one of your own. Number 9. Chimpanzees Chimpanzees may share 98.8% of their DNA with humans, but don't let that fool you into thinking that they're good pets. You see, while baby chimps are cute and docile, by the age of five, a chimpanzee usually possesses about five to six times the strength of a human. And as it begins to become sexually mature, a chimp generally becomes very aggressive and territorial. This can be extremely dangerous, and a couple by the name of Sandra and Jerome Harold found this out the hard way on February 16th of 2009. That's because it was on this day that their friend Charlin Nash was brutally attacked by their pet chimpanzee, Travis. Despite being cared for by the couple since the age of three days old and being treated like a human, after all, he grew up playing with children, dressing himself, watching TV, and going for car rides in the neighborhood. When he saw Charla holding his Tickle Me Elmo toy, he became enraged. This led him to attacking Charla, damaging her face and limbs so badly that even post-surgery Charla's face looked unrecognizable. And while Travis would end up dying after being shot four times by a responding police officer, he serves as a cautionary tale as to why chimps make terrible pets. Number 8. Jerboas when people think of pet rodents, critters such as hamsters, guinea pigs, and gerbils are usually the first thing that comes to mind. However, in the deserts of Africa, the Middle East, and Asia, one can find far more exotic things called jerboas. Having hind legs that are similar to those found on a kangaroo, jerboas move around by hopping through sand dunes, and due to their interesting appearance, many people try to buy them as pets. Now, in the United States, jerboas are banned. This is because in 2003, an outbreak of monkeypox caused the federal government to stop the import of all African rodents due to the possibility of them bringing in the disease. This has severely stunted the jerboa pet trade, yet despite these American restrictions, the jerboa pet industry has thrived in Europe. However, I should warn you that if you want one, you better be prepared. Since they like to hop around in hot and sandy areas, they need to have large enclosures, and ideally, this enclosure should mimic their habitat in the wild. Jerboas also don't breed well in captivity, and while Europeans have gotten a handle on it in recent years and created a somewhat sustainable pet industry, jerboas are virtually extinct in the United States due to the extreme difficulties that American breeders had in reproducing them. So, while jerboas can make cool pets, they're often difficult to find and difficult to house. Number 7. Ostriches Of all the big birds, few are as famous as the ostrich. Native to both Sub-Saharan Africa and the Horn of Africa, these big flightless birds are known for their long necks, big plumage of feathers, and ability to run fast, and their sassy attitude. While this makes them seem like less than an ideal pet, there have been attempts to farm them for quite some time. The first of these farms sprang up in the mid-1800s in South Africa, as at the time, ostrich feathers were so valuable that their value per kilogram was more or less equal to the price of diamonds. However, while the market crashed in 1944, it began to resurface in Australia in the 1990s due to their high-quality meat and hides, although in 2000, this eventually crashed as well. In any case, besides being a terrible investment, ostriches are also not great animals to keep around due to their nature. After all, they are very large animals that need a lot of room to run. And if you as a pet owner don't have too much real estate, then they can become agitated and unwell. Ostriches are also very strong animals, and many don't realize that their beaks and claws can cause some serious damage. If that wasn't bad enough, their liquid poop is reportedly really smelly, and due to their lack of domestication, they don't show humans much love. Therefore, while there are a few people out there that make the questionable decision to farm ostriches for their feathers, meat, or hides, 
I don't suggest keeping one around as a pet. Number six, raccoon dogs. While raccoon dogs may look like a mix between, well, a raccoon and a dog, it turns out that they're not related to either species. Instead, they're closely related to foxes, and their thick fur is what allows them to thrive in cold areas. While native to northeastern Asia, what sets these animals apart is that they caught the eye of the Soviet Union. You see, from 1928 to 1950, the Soviet Union was looking to expand fur production, and in order to do so, they imported raccoon dogs living near the Sea of Japan to areas across the Soviet republics. While they did poorly in some of those regions, their thick fur and status as an omnivore allowed them to adapt well to many others, and as a result, they are currently found across eastern and northern Europe, with countries in their range even including some beyond the former Soviet bloc, such as Denmark, Switzerland, and Norway. In any case, there are now thousands of them located across Europe, and by most accounts, they're an invasive species that can easily damage the ecosystems of these countries. As a result, there are many countries where it's extremely difficult to keep them as pets, as you've got to have permits in order to ensure that you have the necessary capabilities to care for these animals and don't release them into the wild. However, even if you do manage to get a permit, the effort really isn't worth it. That's because despite being very cute, raccoon dogs don't make great pets, as they're shy, don't like when humans touch them, and use an extremely pungent smell to communicate. As such, I'd suggest buying an actual dog instead. Number 5. Tigers Few animals are quite as awe-inspiring as a tiger, and at up to 4 meters in length and 300 kilograms in weight, tigers are absolutely massive, and their striped exterior and muscular bodies make them one of the most impressive and powerful animals in the animal kingdom. However, despite being an endangered species and a dangerous one at that, tigers are still a hot commodity on the exotic pet market, and one Netflix series that documented this quite well was Tiger King. As per the documentary, tigers are extremely cute when they're young, and for the first 8 to 12 weeks of their lives, many are shown around in petting zoos. However, once this period is up, they're usually too big to display, and at this point, the majority are either killed, sold as pets, or displayed at roadside zoos. This brings about two major problems. The first is that due to this practice, a total of about 10,000 tigers are believed to be in captivity in the United States alone. And because they're not nearly as profitable as cubs, many are severely mistreated. Perhaps even more importantly, tigers are not meant to be kept as pets, and thus many tiger owners have been brutally attacked in the past. One such example of this came in January of 2010, when a Canadian businessman and chairman of the Canadian Exotic Animal Owners Association by the name of Norman Bulwalda was mauled to death by his pet tiger when he opened its cage with this coming after a 2004 incident when the same tiger severely injured a 10-year-old boy. So, given the horrors of the pet tiger industry and how dangerous they are to own, I'd suggest not keeping tigers as pets under any circumstances. Number 4. Alligators If you ever happen to journey into a swamp, then an alligator is probably the last animal you'd want to encounter. They're large enough to maul a human, they've got no place in someone's home, and yet the reality is there are many places in the United States where it's perfectly legal to breed alligators and sell them as pets. Generally located in the southeastern United States, baby alligators will cost anywhere from $150 to over $15,000 if the alligator is an albino. From there, buyers then bring them to their pools and bathtubs, where they almost always have a lower quality of living than they would have had in the wild. In total, there are easily more than 10,000 alligators in captivity across the country, and this is a problem for two main reasons. The first is that when people can't take care of their alligator, they sometimes release them into the wild, and if they're placed somewhere where alligators don't naturally live, they can wreak havoc on local ecosystems and endanger local swimmers. The other major problem is that they don't actually make good pets. They're likened by some scientists as being similar to keeping a dinosaur in your home. They don't show emotion or attachment like a dog or cat would, making them far from rewarding to care for. Alligators also need a lot of space and a warm environment to thrive, meaning that the pools and bathtubs they're usually kept in aren't large enough. To top this off, they have no qualms about chomping down on their owners, and many alligator owners have been killed over the years after their pets attack them. So, while these big reptiles may be cool to view in zoos or in the wild, I certainly wouldn't want to bring one home. Number 3. Kinkajous 
While kinkajous are a species that's unknown to many in North America and Europe, they are beginning to pick up steam as a popular exotic pet, also known as honey bears. They're native to Central and South America and are a cat-sized rainforest mammal that's related to raccoons and coatis. Standing apart due to their long tails and cute looks, they are a nocturnal species that spends most of their time in trees. And while this may not make them sound like a great contender for a suburban pet, they have nonetheless been bought by many exotic pet owners. While they are legal to own in many countries, many are imported to wealthy countries illegally. And if that wasn't bad enough, what many people don't realize is that they're an absolute pain in the ass to look after. As a nocturnal animal, they don't like being bothered during the day, and so if you startle or agitate them by trying to interact with them when the sun's out, they may get agitated and bite. When they're up at night, they tend to make loud barking noises too, making a good night's sleep near impossible and making it hard to look after one unless you're as nocturnal as they are. Since they're genetically wired to spend their nights foraging in the rainforest for food, they're not that all interested in human companionship. Since this foraging makes them curious creatures, if you don't create a great environment and secure your things, there's a good chance your pet kinkajou will sneak around your house and cause a lot of mess. To top this off, they can't be potty trained and are not able to be treated by most vets, and they're prone to dental diseases. And so, unless you're a complete night owl that's okay with constantly having to entertain a small raccoon-like animal, I'd suggest staying far away from kinkajous. Number 2. Wolves Many people keep large dogs as pets, and since these breeds sometimes look wolf-like, many believe that actual wolves may not be all that different. However, the reality is that keeping a wolf as a pet is far different than having a German Shepherd or Alaskan Malamute. You see, unlike dogs, wolves have not been domesticated to rely on humans, making them shy, suspicious, and very independent. As a result, they're far more similar to cats in that they like to do their own thing and aren't very interested in following human commands, making them difficult to control and train. If you do manage to do so, you'll have to use positive reinforcement techniques and, unsurprisingly, many of the training tricks that work with dogs are useless with wolves. Beyond the training piece, studies have shown that wolves don't tend to form close bonds with humans. More specifically, while wolves are a lot like dogs when they are puppies, as they grow older they tend to become far more independent, and while they will still form social bonds with their owners, they won't form the bonds of dependency that a normal dog will. This in turn makes them hard to have around, and they will naturally want to treat you more like a buddy than an owner. To get around these issues, some people have instead opted to take in wolf-dog hybrids as pets. Wolf dogs are interesting because unlike wolves, they have some characteristics of domestic dogs, with the issue that it's a real gamble whether or not the animal will be more wolf or more dog. The ability to train a wolf dog is highly dependent on this genetic outcome. Although, even if you do get a good mix, wolf dogs still can't be treated like regular large dog breeds. After all, due to their genes, they need to be very mentally stimulated and spend a lot of time outside, must be socialized constantly to reinforce positive social behaviors, and ideally need several pounds of raw meat rather than dog food every single day. They also tend to do far better in pairs, and if lonely nor anxious, they'll easily tear up your house. So, unless you're up to the challenge, I'd suggest staying far, far away from wolves or wolf dogs, and instead going for a far tamer pet, like a normal dog. Number 1. Alpacas While alpacas can be found grazing high up in the Andes in the countries of Peru, Bolivia, Ecuador, and Chile, they can also be found in the homes of many Americans. Often confused with llamas, they are far smaller and tamer than their more famous counterparts, and it makes them a relatively good animal to have around as a pet. After all, they are generally easy to care for, fairly disease-resistant, and hardy enough to not only thrive in many weather conditions, but also use something as simple as a hedge or a fallen tree for shelter. Since they are herd animals, they need to be kept in groups. So long as you have a fair amount of outdoor space, they can be kept quite comfortably. However, despite the fact that they look cute and cuddly, many alpacas don't like to be touched and will kick you if threatened, meaning that you have to develop a strong relationship with one in order for it to allow you to get into its personal space. Alpacas also stand apart from many other animals on this list due to their history as being part of a speculative investment bubble. Just like REITs in 2008 and crypto in 2022, alpacas were part of a cycle where they were very hyped up and then subsequently sold off in droves. 
You see, the first alpacas entered the United States in the 1980s, and since it was extremely difficult to import them, a rather strong business came out amongst those who bred them. At first, they were mainly kept around for their wool, but low wool prices meant that there wasn't as much money in keeping them around for this material. Instead, the real money came from breeding and selling them, and thanks to them being marketed as the investment you could hug, they began to surge in price through the 1990s into the mid-2000s. While some bought into that hype, others bought alpacas for the tax benefits. Due to their status as a farm animal in many states, those who have alpaca farms get to take advantage of generous government subsidies given to small farmers, meaning that people could buy a few alpacas and significantly reduce their tax burden. The marketing and tax benefits were the perfect storm, and by 2004, alpacas were selling for between $25,000 to $30,000 apiece. However, between 2005 and 2006, the bubble had burst, and things got so bad that alpacas were simply being killed, or more or less being given away for free due to their maintenance costs. And while the alpaca market has since recovered, I'd suggest only buying one as a pet if you're looking for personal enjoyment rather than an investment opportunity. I'll see you next time. Watch our Animals playlist for more top 15 videos about animals. Sit back, relax, and binge watch all of our best animal-related videos.